So this is a, a recording of a talk that I gave recently at SODA 2016 uh, and I thought it would be interesting experiment to put it uh, on YouTube. So um, so since this is a theory uh, talk, let me start with an open problem you're given a, a set of uh, segments in the plane and you're interested in computing the largest independent set of segments namely you, you're interested in finding a set of segments of a, a largest size such that no pair of segments intersect and for this problem we have a quasi pitas namely we have an algorithm that for a fixed epsilon provide us with a 1 minus epsilon approximation of the optimal solution and the running time is n to uh, a polynomial in log n and 1 over epsilon. So the open question of course is can we get a pitas, namely for a fixed epsilon approximation parameter can we get a running time which is a polynomial. So naturally if you think about this problem for a bit uh, this problem is just a question about the independent set in a graph, so uh, we have a set of vertices, we want to find the largest subset of the vertices such that no pair of them is adjusted by an edge, and we know that in general this problem is uh, really hard. Uh, in particular we know that no approximation is possible within a factor of n to the 1 minus epsilon for any parameter epsilon. On the other hand, for the geometric case, we can do a quasi pitas So the problem is much easier. And as such, the meta question here is really why is the geometric problem so much easier um, than the general case? Now, as you uh, might expect, the, the problem is all about the kind of graph that we are working with. And um, and in this talk I'm going to present some uh, graph classes uh, and show some of the property and how we can use them to get efficient algorithms uh, and those graphs will include of course planar graphs, uh, geometric intersection graph, low density graph and polynomial expansion graph. Now those graphs would yield uh, efficient uh, approximation algorithm and they should be differentiated from uh, bad graphs for which we cannot do a good approximation and uh, uh, for our discussion here bad graphs are for example constant degree expanders because we cannot get a, a 1 minus epsilon approximations for independent set for example for constant degree expander. Okay. So, uh, what is a geometric intersection graph? So, we are given a set of uh, uh, objects in, uh, you know, some geometric space, let's say the plane, and uh, every object is a vertex, and we can connect two vertices by an edge if and only if the two objects intersect, right? And the hope is somehow that uh, under a natural setting, this graph that we get would be a nicely behaved graph so we can solve various geometric optimization problems on it efficiently. Unfortunately, the bad news is that in three dimensions uh, it's already uh, impossible in the sense that we can get geometric intersection graph of interior disjoint polytopes uh, that realize K, uh, you know, the complete clique Kn, or if you want, we can in fact realize any graph we want, and not only uh, this can be done by polytops, but this can also be done by uh, this can also be done by uh, um, uh, that can be done by uh, polytops, which are all the same. They're essentially uh, n copies of the per same polytope that are rotated and translated, which means that uh, geometric intersection graph already in three dimensions can realize any graph we might want. 
And in particular, this specific construction also implies that you can uh, realize any uh, three regular graph as the intersection graph of uh, interior disjoint triangles in three dimensions. And that's bad, right? Because uh, three regular graphs include constant degree expanders, uh, which uh, are bad graphs for us. So this means that if we want to, to do anything or hope to do anything, we need to assume something additional. Okay. So, um, so let's start from the familiar planar graphs. So planar graphs are just graphs where the vertices are just uh, points in the plane, and uh, we can we draw the graph in the plane where an edge is a Jordan curve and no two Jordan curves are allowed to intersect in their interior. So um, the first interesting ob observation is that planar graph can be drawn uh, using straight segments. There is a, a very elegant proof of that by Ferry uses using induction. In the good old days, I would uh, call it the proof from the book, but in the modern time, this should be called the, you know, the proof from Wikipedia. Uh, not only it can be drawn with straight segment, but the vertices themselves can be placed on the vertices of an integer grid, which is pretty small. And uh, maybe the most uh, striking result of planar graphs for our purposes is the fact that it can be drawn as a, a kissing graph of circle, uh, also known as the circle packing theorem. So what do I mean by that? So uh, the idea is that you give me a planar graph, like the one drawn on the left, and I want to realize it as a set of circles or disks. I'm going to use the two words in interchangeably in this uh, talk. So we want to realize them as a set of uh, uh, interior disjoint disks such that two disks intersect if and only if their corresponding vertices share an edge. Right. And uh, here is another example of such a, a circle packing, and here is another example, and another example. Um, this example is more interesting because it demonstrates also that the same graph can have uh, many, in fact, infinitely different uh, realization as a circle packing. I refer to this uh, specific realization as Bigfoot. Okay, um, and what I want, I want to sketch to you the proof of this uh, pretty uh, amazing result. But before going any further to appreciate this result, uh, you need to understand what it says in some sense. So, a graph being planar is a topological property. And what the circle packing theorem says is that we can convert it into a, a a completely geometric uh, property in, the, in, you know, in the plane. And the nice thing is that once we have geometric properties in the plane, we can use regular packing argument and stuff like that uh, when arguing about those graphs. So it really is uh, 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 pretty powerful, as I hopefully demonstrate shortly. OK, so the basic idea is um, that we are going to take the graph and assign uh, the vertices radiuses. Right now, if I have a face which is a triangle, namely a face surrounded by three edges, then once I fix the radiuses of its three vertices, this uniquely determine how this triangle would look like when I realize it with disks. Right, and in particular, as I enlarge uh, the radius of a vertex while fixing all the other radiuses. What happens is that uh, the disk uh, becomes larger, the angle of the triangle adjacent to it becomes smaller. So I can control the angles in the realization by playing with the radiuses. And that's kind of uh, uh, a pretty powerful property because think about the vertex in our planar graph. We know all the faces uh, uh, surrounding it, that it's that they're around it. And Let's think about all of them as triangles. Uh, and then what we can do, we can just uh, take the radius of this vertex and set this radius to be such that the sum of the angles in the realization around this vertex 
are going to be exactly 360 degrees. Namely, uh, the realization of the triangulation, the realization of this disk packing around this disk is going to look planar. And it turns out that if you can guarantee this for all the vertices in the planar graph, then you get the desired realization. So that's what we are going to do, right? We're going to start with the planar graph. Uh, as a first step, we're going to triangulate it, so add edges until all the faces are triangles. And now what we are going to do, we're just going to initially assign arbitrary uh, uh, radi to the disks. And now for every disk we are going to, for every vertex to be more precise, we look on uh, all the triangular faces around it and the radius assigned to the vertices around it, and we are going to figure out what radius this vertex needs to set such that it becomes a planar, namely the sum of angles around it is going to be 360 degrees. Some, no, some vertices, uh, some disk would like to shrink, some vert uh, this would like to expand, and some disk would want to remain the same. And now what we do, we, we just go and update them. Right? Uh, we update them, and, uh, and we recompute. Okay, and we repeat this process. Now, I'm skipping here details because, uh, in fact, the details here are pretty uh, subtle, so you have to be very careful about the way you do it, so you don't do all of them simultaneously. But if you do this update of the radiuses in the right way, uh, then this process converge. Namely, in the limit, you get the desired realization of the planar graph as uh, touching disks. Now, the amazing thing about this um, about this theorem is that currently that's the best thing we have, right? We don't currently have a finite combinatorial algorithm to compute this realization. So this is really one of those cases where uh, we have this existential proof, uh, and it would be nice, to, of course, to have a more constructive proof of this result. Okay, so, and this is, by the way, the realization of this graph as a set of touching disks. Okay, so, uh, so this theorem has, in fact, uh, many generalizations. Uh, let me mention one of them, which is really nice. So every planar graph has a dual graph. In the dual graph, every face is a vertex, and two faces are connected by an edge, if and only if they are adjacent in the original primal graph. So in particular on the slide, you can see an example of a planar and its dual. Now, the dual of a planar graph is also a planar graph, and now by the circle packing theorem, I can realize both of them as two sets of disks. And now, if I take those two sets of disks, I can just overlay them, right? Put them together one on top of the other. And if I do that, if I look on the resulting intersection graph, which is depicted on the right, I get an, uh, a graph which is a supergraph, both of the primal and the dual graph. Namely, it includes the primal graph, it includes the dual graph, and, it, and in addition, there is an edge between the a vertex in the primal and uh, a vertex of the face in the dual, if and only if this vertex is on the boundary of a face. Right? So, one of the extensions of the circle packing theorem states that for every planar graph, there exists such a simultaneous realization. And in fact, there are uh, some additional properties. For example, every um, uh, circle in the primal uh, is orthogonal to any circle in the dual. Right. So, uh, so this is ki uh, quite uh, an amazing result.